We are live. It's Monday night right here on Madhouse TV with the Maverick Soul Hour with Tommy Marr. I'm telling you again, we got a great show tonight. I think this is a topic that should have been discussed long ago. I know it's discussed constantly in the music scene. I know there's Facebook pages about it, but we're here tonight. We want to find a happy medium somewhere in the middle of the road between the bands and the venues. Now, um, just so you know, when I was a younger man, I ran a lot of nightclubs. I know the business very well. And I'm also now in bands that play in a lot of clubs on Long Island. And I have people here that own a venue. I'm not going to introduce them yet, but uh, we have great people here with, with a great venue. And we're going to try to come between us all tonight and find out or at least get close to what is the right thing to do. Because I know, I know, I constantly read that bands are being ripped off and owners are being pissed off that they're, you know, they're not bringing the thing and they're dumping everything on the bands to bring the people. And we're going to get into it all. The phone lines, you can call if you have ideas, if you have any questions, feel free to do that. Uh, but before we get started, I want to talk about the week a little bit. Um, first of all, I want to thank, with all my heart and soul, the American bombshells coming last week. I, well, I mean, for all you guys that saw the show, I can't think of anybody I have much more respect for than these three women. Actually, there's six of them. They go in threes. But um, they were so great last week. They were so gracious. And um, while they were here, I was telling a story about, uh, you know, the whole concept of the show was, you know, um, getting patriotism back in this country and uh, how that the youth of this country, and not just the youth, the adults, everybody takes freedom for, for granted. I mean, when you walk out your door and you can just jump in your car and go anywhere you want, you know, you can't do that in Afghanistan or, uh, you know, lots and lots of places out of this country. So there's a big price to pay for freedom, and uh, these vets have done the right thing, and what these girls do to support our vets is just so above and beyond the call of duty. And I, I'll tell you, I still have a great feeling in my stomach from them being here. But um, in, in, while we were doing the show, um, I had just a thought came into my mind because I was talking about when I was a kid and how you know everybody went to the Veterans Day Parade, the Memorial Day Parade, the Fourth of July Parade. I mean, the towns would be packed. I mean, literally packed. And now, it's, they're, they're like down to like 40 people and one guy with a drum, you know. It's really sad that we're not giving these guys the support and respect that they should have. I mean, you know, they're living under bridges and stuff and we're giving jobs to uh, illegal aliens. And I mean, these are the guys who we should be giving jobs to. So, you know, all you guys that are riding by picking people up in your trucks and that, you know, call up the vets and see if maybe you could give them a little job or something. And... Uh, but I also was telling them a story about uh, how things have changed. And uh, I had seen a picture many times. I'm sure you've, a lot of you have seen this picture. But it's a picture to me that is it's so sad because it, it actually just self-explanatory of how this world has changed, how, how this country has changed. From, from all the support, I mean, when I went to, when I was a kid, there were thousands of people at the, and this is in every town, in a vet, at a Veterans Day Parade. And uh, now, you know, I go to them still, and there's like, you know, 40 people there. And it's really disgraceful. I mean, it, it's disgraceful. So uh, I actually found the picture today. So I'd like, if we could possibly put that up, I would like to show you this picture. Because this is way wrong. So, I mean, if you could see this. Now, this is a whole town. And now this is the vets coming by with the American flag. And look closely. Every single person in the town is sitting down. Look at them. They're sitting down on their asses with the flag and the vets coming by and the wounded warriors. And if you look really, you don't even have to look close. There's one person standing up. He's probably about 82 years old. And he's in a wheelchair. And he's the only one standing up with his hand over his heart. So... I don't know what the parents are teaching the kids nowadays, but it certainly isn't the right thing. Get off your asses, take off your hats, put your hand over your heart, 
and thank these people with every bitch you got because you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. So look at that picture and take a good look at it. And the next time you get your ass to a parade, stand up and do the right thing. You know, these guys lay their whole lives down for you and uh, we don't even show up to respect them. So that's my, sorry, that's my rant of the evening. Uh, we'll get back to business now. Um, I also was, I ran into, I, you guys that know me, uh, I had a picture of a house, a friend of mine that lives five houses away, his house last week burnt down to the ground, just to the foundation, terrible, lost everything. Uh, I ran into him today when I was doing my walk, and uh, I, I told him that, you know, we, we sent out prayers on Madhouse, and we did on my Facebook, and I said, and believe me, you got a lot of responses and a lot of prayers, and he said, well, they must have been answered because we're still alive and uh, everything's pretty cool. But he says, I would just want to ask you one favor. And I said, what's that? And he's a school teacher. And he said, uh, I just beg of you to go on your show tonight. And he didn't even know I had a show. And he says, I beg of you to just ask everyone that's watching to go and check the batteries in your smoke alarms. Because he said... If it wasn't for his smoke alarms, him and his wife would be dead. Another 30 seconds, they would have been dead. So even the kids, make sure you get your parents to check the uh, batteries in the smoke detectors because it might save everyone's life. So, and keep this guy in your prayers too and his family. Um, another quick note, this Saturday night at 9 o'clock in Massapequa at the Blue Parrot the Vintage Revolution Band will be there rocking the house. It's going to be a big show. It's going to be a lot of people there. Um, come down and party with us. It's going to be great. We have the, two of the best guitar players around. You'll really, really enjoy yourself. And uh, it's a great place. They don't allow morons in there. It's really a good place. So come down to the Blue Pirates Saturday night, 9 o'clock, and we're going to rock your socks off. And then... And then Finally, well, not finally, but also please keep your prayers for everybody that's been so affected and devastated by this storm. It, it, it's really, I don't think people uh, outside of Long Island and, and Jersey are really grasping how devastating it was. So please keep us all in your prayers. And uh, finally, on a, on a little funny, not so funny note, I watched Tom Mealy's show Saturday night, and he was speaking with someone, a biker guy, which I actually, I, I dug this guy a lot. I, I like where he's coming from. And, um, but Tom uh, threw me into the mix about coming in, uh, coming up to do a benefit. And that uh, he said, yeah, Tommy Marr will come up. He's a singer. He'll come up and sing. And he loves camping. Now, this is the first time in my life I ever knew that I love camping. Because to me, roughing it is like when room service stops at midnight. So I don't know where he got that. I like camping thing. I'm not a camper, but I will go up and I will do the benefit. You'll camp. You'll I will. Camp. I won't camp. I will, I'll sleep in my car, but I won't camp. camp. I heard you were getting a cabin. I'm getting a cabin. So uh, I don't know where he got that camping thing. I, I go up to Yazga's farm a lot, but I don't sleep in the woods. <laughs> so um, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to go to commercial. So if you want to call up and, and, and ask questions, we're going to get into this. This is going to be a great conversation. And we also have a great comedian coming on a little after that. It's going to be great. Hang in there. Get yourself tight. Be right back with the Maverick Soul Hour right here on Madhouse TV. Be right back at you. Hi, this is Mickey B, the Prince of Rock and Roll. Join me for my rock and solid gold holiday dance party Saturday, December 1st, 8 p.m. at the Belmore Columbus Club, 2333 Belmore Avenue in Belmore with the rock and sounds of the 50s through the 80s. Starring the Accords, the Fabuliers, third edition, and DJAs playing all your rocking hits. Party with Santa, Full Hot Buffet, Coffee Dessert Cash Bar, Reservations Required. Call 516. 516-822-9612 516-822-9612 or mickeyb.com Sponsored by
Welcome to Formula Auto Wash, where every day is a great day for a car wash. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5:30 p.m. Sundays 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Detailing packages for every budget, starting out at $29.99. 100% hand wash and detail centre. Hogs hair and microfiber brushes and mitts. Proudly using Ecolab Blue Coral soaps and waxes. Formula Auto Wash has served the community for over 30 years. See any discounts all day, every day. Ladies Day Wednesday, $3 off any wash. Early bird discount Monday through Thursday till 9.30 a.m. Check out our website, formulaautowash.com. B&M Performance Cycles, 439 South Main Street, Messina, New York. We handle all parts, accessories, and do all repairs. We can custom build your bike for show or hot rod. We also do New York State inspections on all motorcycles. B&M Performance Cycles, come see us today. We are back live at Madhouse TV with the Maverick Soul Hour. Um, I have an announcement to make. I was just given this announcement. Um, it's something we've had in the works. I didn't know it was coming out tonight, but I would like all the friends, I don't like the word fans because I, it's ridiculous, but uh, all the friends that watch the show, and uh, I, know, I know there's a lot of you guys, I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to do me a favor to kick off this new thing we're going to start here. And I'm going to tell you, you guys are going to be at the foundation of something very, very special and very, very big, like possibly as big as Facebook. So I would like you guys all to go on tonight if you can or whenever you can. We will put it up on the, on the screen. But I would like you to join. Come for free, costs nothing. And um, you, go, you go to Madhouse realitytv.com you sign up for free free and then go to log in and be a member of my group and which is the Tommy Marr uh, Maverick Soul Hour and then we're going to be able to while the show is going on we're going to be able to live chat with you you can you can uh, send ideas in you can talk to us off off you know like during the day we can talk, you guys can all as friends talk together and we can get this thing really rolling because uh, you're not going to believe what's going to come out of the studio. It's going to be so big, you're going to say, we were one of the first ones in there. So I want you to all please, as a favor to me, if you have a respect, I would love you to just go to Madhouse, madhouserealitytv.com, okay? MadhouseRealityTV.com for free and go and join my group and um, it'll, it'll kick in in 24 hours. It won't kick in immediately, but in 24 hours you'll be in and you'll be one of the first members of something extremely big. And listen, you know I don't throw the bull crap around. This is going to be a big, 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 big market thing. And you're going to be at the bot at the top of the list because you're starting right with us. You're going to grow right along with us. So it's going to be very cool. It's going to be cool the way they're all going to be able to interact with each other and talk and chat. And you guys can please give me ideas. If you know great bands that you think need a shot, I'll give them a shot. If they're good, you send me a CD. If I like them, they can come on. Even if I don't like them, if someone else likes them, they can come on. So... And that means comedians, we got whatever you want to do, authors, I don't care. But um, if you've got a good idea for a show, let me know, and uh, we'll definitely do it. So um, that's that with that, but I probably will tell you that a couple more times tonight. MadhouseRealityTV.com. Go there, sign up for free, and become one of us, and you'll be a maverick soul. So that'll be very cool. 
and it's and I and trust me, it's going to be a good thing. It's it's something that we need other than Facebook because it's getting boring. This is not going to be boring. This is going to be something you're not going to believe. So get in there early. All right. Now, I would like to introduce my very, very special guests, which actually are very good friends of mine, too. And for all you guys on Long Island, you know them very well. Um, they are Romeo Martello and Janine Barella, which Romeo owns the Blue Parrot in Massapequa, and Janine manages it, which if you've ever been there, they're the two best people you could ever imagine. And the reason that I asked them to come on the show, I wanted them to represent the venues. I will represent the bands, but I also you know, want to let you know that I did run nightclubs in my youth, so I know the business. So I know there's been tons and tons and tons of talk. I've seen websites about, like, you know, bands being abused by venues and, you know, you have to bring this amount of people, you have to do that. But there is another side to the story. And that's why I have Romeo and Janine here, because we're going to just have a little chat. If you would like to call, if you have a question, feel free. We're here to listen. But what I want to, I have a couple of things that I would just like to go over that I always wonder about, because let's face it, times have changed from the 70s. I mean, oh, it's, yeah. you know, <laughs> you didn't have to worry about bringing anybody. They were there already. Right. So, uh, it's it's a new which you guys all know. It's a new it's a different ball game out there. Number one, which I agree with, DWIs makes things very hard. How that has really hurt huge, the bar business, huge right? impact. I and mean, and even with I see. I mean, I, you know, I don't drink, but I'm a big observer. And Ginny, you know, I know nobody worries more about a gig than me because I'm the accountant heads, and I'm like, oh God, do we got enough people in that? So I understand it, but what what us bands have to understand is this is a business and they were there to make money just like whatever you do for a living you're there to make money and i know the whole i saw the jokes about the you know send six plumbers to the to a to your place that on a saturday night and pay them for five hours work that's true but that's really not why we're doing what we do i mean sure everybody would like to make a lot of money going out and playing in venues but the venue has to make money uh, I do believe 100% there are some very abusive venues out there. This, that's why I have these guys here. They not only take care of their bands, they handpick them. They don't allow no nonsense in there. They don't, um, you know, tell you to do this or do that. They just do the right thing. And they've always done the, I've worked with them for years and years. I probably played in that place more than anybody, I mean, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Um, but I've always been treated well. But I also will say, there's been nights that we played there. And I'm being very honest, where, you know, 10 people showed up. And at the end of the night, they tried to hand me $100 or something. And we, I wouldn't even accept it because it wasn't right. You know, you know I feel that the band has an obligation but I also feel that the, now, see, this is where it comes in. I feel the venue has a more of an obligation, and it's mostly with advertising. Now, I know for a fact that Romeo and Janine work a lot on the computer, and any band that plays in their place, they instantly send out an invitation for 3,500 people. So, I mean, that's advertising. I mean, bands can't, you know, you can't put that many stickers on a car at, a, at the railroad station, you know what I mean? So, I mean, they work at it. But I will agree with it. a lot of people. Most places don't. They're all, well, how many people are you bringing? That's all I want to know. You, I mean, I've been told by a place not very far down the road here, you got to guarantee me 150 people. You know what? It's not a <laughs> band on Long Island that can guarantee anybody 150 people. I don't care who they are. I really don't care who they are. You might get 150 people there, but it's, you're not going to guarantee it. Yeah. Because, you know, I played and had 150 people. And on nights when I thought I'd have 10, and then on the nights I thought I'd have 10, I'd had 150. So, you know, somewhere in the middle, it all should, you know, work out. So, I mean, like, like what, what my, my question is on uh, how do you feel about, don't you agree that, that, that the uh, venues 
do have an obligation to, to advertise the, the, oh, the yeah. gigs too? And, and we do a lot of it, like okay. you said. I have no, 3,500 friends That's on why Facebook. you're here, Romeo. Yeah. If we, you were one of the other ones, we'd be already <laughs> rolling on the ground, you know. I mean, I'm telling you. But I know you do the right thing, and that's why I want you here, because I want these other venues to see why you are successful at what you do. And, and Janine, because you run it right. I mean, you do. You, mm. you, 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 that's why I always love to play there, because I know it's going to be, whether we make a lot of money or a little money, we're going to have fun. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, you know, it is, a, you know, guys, I know everybody needs money. Everybody. But if the venue doesn't make money, how can they pay you? So, you have an obligation to bring people, and they have an obligation to advertise the gig. So, I have a couple questions for you. And now, being the person, Janine, that you know that I am, I'm a watcher. Yeah, I watch everything. Absolutely. And I, even I'm up there singing, I'm watching, I'm counting, I'm this, I'm that. I see, and I'm, and I, and I'm sure it has a lot to do with the DWIs, where a guy goes over and buys a Coke or a club soda and they sip it all night long, you yeah. know? I mean, and if you have 100 people in there and 50 of them are sipping one soda, you're not making any money. It might look like you're making money because, you know, I've heard a lot of bands say, oh, my God, we had, the place was packed. Yeah, but did they make money, you know? So that's the two-sided coin, which right. they don't they understand. They don't see that side, right. And, you know, that's why I want you here to explain that, I mean, because it is, I see it. I mean, I see the big glasses with the with the lines. I mean, I'm one of them, you know. I see yeah. it, and I see the ones that sit down and they sip with a straw and they try to hold that thing at the end of the night. There's that much left. Yeah. So, you know. You yeah, know, like you said, like back in our time when you, you have a couple of drinks there. Right. Nowadays, I mean, if they do come out, they may have two drinks, maybe three. No one's having five, six, right. seven drinks anymore. Right. You know, and that's what it is. They're all afraid of DWIs. And, really hurt. Yeah. and rightfully so. Yeah. But what I, what, I, what I want everyone to understand is that they're not seeing that. They're right. just seeing exactly. bodies. Right. And, you know, if you bring in 100 bodies and, and 20 of them are drinking and 80 of them aren't, you only <laughs> got <happens>. 20. <laughs> that's no, exactly. all you got. Exactly. So it is a two-sided coin. And uh, I just have a couple of questions that I just, when I was walking today, I, I actually was talking into my phone. Um, like cover charges. Um, it, they vary all over the place, you know. And um, I think that's a place where maybe people can work with the bands. Like my question actually to you is for, for the bands, what, what do you think is the best way for a band to uh, negotiate with the venue? We always leave the cover charge up to the band. We tell the, any band that wants to play with us, we tell them, you're getting 100% of the door. Whatever you want to charge at the door is up to you. Oh, reasonable, of course. <laughs> Whatever. It, Whatever. it makes well, it because we're, we are counting on the bands to, to bring in people. Right. And if they want to charge the people five dollars ten dollars we have some some that do eight dollars that's totally up to the band we leave it completely up to the band yeah, see. and another thing just to back what you were saying before is not giving the bands you know you have to do it this way this way right. this way because it does have to be a win-win for everybody right. so the only way that that can happen is if the bands are happy and and if we're happy as well i agree and that's the same thing with start times I'm never telling a band, you have to start at right. 10 o'clock and you got to end at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. I'm saying, you tell me right. what you think is easier for you to get people out, that's when you start. Right. And we always leave that up to the bands as well. For that well, very reason, now, it has see, that, to work that, for that's everybody. That's actually a good point, and that might be a good negotiation point for you guys and bands. Rather than, Without you know, question. have this guy tell you, well, you have to bring me X amount of people, just say, listen. How about I just take the door, I'll charge what I want at the door, and we take the door. You know, that kind of, you know, then, it, then it's on you. Absolutely. And, and there's the, band, uh, the, the venue should certainly be advertising because they want the other half of it. You know, they want the drinking end of it. You know, right. so that's, 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 that's a good mix. Right. That's a fair mix. And, and, you know, so that might be that we might have struck on number one there. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people, people do that, but... Right. I don't think, I think a lot of bands mostly don't even know, they're so excited to play, 
they don't even negotiate, you know, or they don't even know what they're getting paid. I, I'm sure, I know they, I mean, I know they don't. So um, I would want to know up front what, see, I have so much trust in them, I don't even worry about it. But, um, but like the, la the last band that I was in, we were actually having, getting written contracts up. Because you can do that through um, yeah, I've heard I've heard reverbina right, Reverb reverbination. Right, reverbination. Yeah. yeah, you can actually do that. Um, I don't, you know, that one. That one to me is a one-sided coin. You know, I mean, the bar could really get hurt that way. You know, I think. So, I mean, I kind of like the door. Um, now, can they put their own person at the door? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. sure. Absolutely. See, now, now that way you can't complain about anything. Absolutely. And you we and we always and anything. we always let the bands know they are more than welcome to use their own person. If they want to use our person, it's fine. Um, the only reason that we ever recommend them not using their own person is because what we've discovered in the past is that a lot of times when they have their own person at the door, they tend to let people in and not charge right. them so that at the end right. of the night, right. now they're saying, well, that's hey. that's the band's problem. Right. Yeah. But, then you can, right. Just, you can just put your yeah. hands up and go, hey, pal, that's your problem. Right. But that's problem. the only, but again, we don't have, and we leave, we tell the bands that you can use our person or your own, whatever you want to do, that's completely up to them. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to, I hope you guys are digging this. We're going to, we're going to go to a commercial quick. We're going to come right back, and please, light up the phones. Let's hear some questions. I know you guys out there in bands have questions, so, and I want to hear some ideas from you guys, too. We, I have a couple more things I want to speak about, but uh, we're going to go to commercial now. We'll be right back, so hang in there with the Maverick Soul. We'll be right back. sitting in with Chris doing a reading. Let's see what's going on. Okay, I, I've never had a reading like this before, so just bear with me. I, I'm, I'm seeing bugs. Bugs? I thought you were a psychic medium. I know, that's what's confusing. Uh, hold on. Do you want the good news or the bad news? I'll take the bad news. I think these are spirit bugs. Spirit bugs? I've never heard of spirit bugs. Yeah, that's just it. Do you want the good news? Yes. I know Joe from Bug Busters of Long Island. He'll take care of your problem. That's great. Hi, I'm Vinny, owner of VMD Electric. Family owned and operated since 1996, serving all of Nassau and Suffolk County. You can call us anytime, night or day, at 631-669-6915 for all your residential and commercial needs. Here are some photos of our current projects. Suffolk County Gold Refinery for the highest paid prices for your gold, diamonds, and jewelry with cash on the spot. Visit their showroom for unbelievable prices on fine jewelry and engagement rings. 71 Nobob Boulevard, Farmingdale, 631-777-CASH. Suffolk County Gold Refinery for the highest paid prices for your gold, diamonds, and jewelry with cash on the spot. Visit their showroom for unbelievable prices on fine jewelry and engagement rings. 71 Nobob Boulevard, Farmingdale, 631-777-CASH. For the highest paid prices for your gold, diamonds, and jewelry with cash on the spot. Suffolk County Gold Refinery, 631-777-CASH. We are back with the Maverick Soul on Madhouse TV. And my guests here, Romeo and Janine from the Blue Parrot in Massapequa, New York, are here. We're talking about bands and venues and how to come in the middle and make everybody happy. 
So, right. Romeo, you, you, you just did mention something during the commercial that I think is very important. Yes, so. just for all your bands and venues out there, like we were saying about how the band gets 100% of the door, but we always, will always add to that also. You're not just walking away with the door. I mean, I think 100% of the time we've always added. It's just a matter of how much, depending, like you said, on how many people drinking sodas, right. drinking, you know, so I mean, it's got to be a win-win situation. But it's not only the door. We do always add to the door yeah. also. And I can, so you know I can that. vouch for that. And yeah. uh, now you're going to have, like, millions of bands going <laughs> yeah. up over there. Yeah, we've but never I mean, not added to Actually, the door. I'm glad you said that because that's a great statement for the venues. Right. You know, they, that, they should you know guys, you, you know, the greed can get a little stupid, too. You know I mean? I've seen a lot of greedy venues, but... Yeah. Uh, that's why these guys are here, and I respect them greatly. And um, now, what do you think about like uh, in places where I know this doesn't affect you, but uh, in, in in even maybe not even bigger places, but small even bars that serve food. Now, when you have people eating in that, now you're talking about a lot more money. You know, sure. I mean, should that be figured in with the with the band? You know what I mean? Like, well, if, yeah. if their friends are coming and they're Ordering a lot, right? Like, I mean, we played. Uh, I won't mention the name of the place, but I think every single person that was there was eating, yeah. and we w we weren't paid like they were eating. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So yeah. See, it should. It thing. has to. It has to work sure. that way, though. It's, you know, they, to be they, fair, it, it should. still brings up our bottom line. So yeah, so you right. should get more right. too. Yeah, well, it's just right. the way it is. So basically, what we I'm make saying, more. You make more. Basically, what I'm saying is maybe you could cook some burgers for us. Well, we don't have a kitchen there. A little toaster oven. Um, hot pockets. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you you agree also with 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 me with um, well I guess it eliminates it if the bands are putting their own people at the door. No, uh, yeah, you know well, no that, one's getting in for free. Right, and yeah. they should be allowed See, that, to. That's a big problem, I think. It is a big. problem. I think it's a big problem in a lot of venues because the door guy knows you know they're all regular customers you know. You know just let the bands people pay. And that's wrong. It is that's, wrong. That's wrong. It is wrong, and uh, I've I've lived that life many times, and uh, and there are times right. where we do have people that we know should not pay if they're right. coming through, but we'll pay the we'll right. pay their cover because if they're if they're coming in and we don't want to charge them, it's because there's somebody that's coming there. Well, that's often, cool. well, that's and great. so we will pay their yeah. cover. I mean, it's, you know. So if I go see Randy Jackson over there? Right? Absolutely. <laughs> you come in and you, you have him coming Randy. up again, too, right? Thanksgiving Eve. Wednesday Thanksgiving night. Eve. Randy Wednesday? Jackson from Zebra will be there at the Blue Parrot. Nine o'clock start. Nine o'clock start. And I'll tell you something. That is a show and a half. Let me tell you something. That guy is incredible. incredible. Yeah, he plays once a month there. He, he pl plays. plays a 12-string guitar, acoustic guitar, with these four Marshall amps stacked Sick. You think you're in Carnegie Hall, I swear to God, and he plays Zeppelin. He plays, The guy is amazing, amazing. And to see him in a, in, a, in a small venue like that, not that it's small, maybe for one, you know, yeah, yeah, no, something so big, it, it's it's really cool. So go see Randy Jackson, uh, but make sure you come down Saturday night to see us. Um, so what other, what other things do you see that, uh, you know, like that, where mistakes are being made with, you know, because I'm, I'm sure you talk to other club owners and stuff yeah. and that, and, you know, everybody complains about everything, so. I think, I think one other mistake that, that's made, I think, is, is the bands playing too often. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're, we're very, you know, we, we make sure that we speak to the bands about that as well, because if a band's playing out, you know, yeah. every weekend or. Especially if they're playing a mile away. Exactly. They're not going to be able to to right. bring in the people, and but we're very honest with the bands right up front. So you know, we let them know that we're well, counting on it, and we'd prefer if you are playing that often, then put us off. You know, let us, you know, book book later. But well, I mean, that's it's, a big it's actually mistake. happened with me in your place where we were booked every month, and you know, it it's tough. It's tough. It's, you know, you know these guys, they got hemorrhoids, they got all these problems, they can't get out of bed or whatever it is. But uh, it's tough to get people to come down. It is. And, and, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And I mean, and, but I know you do a lot of work on the computer. A lot. I mean, he videotapes them while they're playing live to have people come down and see what they're missing. I mean, they work hard at it. And that's what these venues should do rather than just sit back and say, how many people can you bring me? Because that's wrong. That's just flat out wrong. It is wrong. And, and it has it, to be everybody does there it. There should be a, a, a molding between the two and a total understanding, 
And I think what you guys do is great because, I mean, uh, you know, there's no, nobody's, you know, we all kind of know. Like when we're playing at the Blue Parrot, we know, you know, we know we're not going to get screwed. And if we didn't do the right thing, we're not going to screw you. And right, I mean, right. Oh, absolutely. A couple of nights, I said we didn't want anything. Yeah, nothing. Absolutely. And uh, but and I think it's way, also important. You got to work the other way too. Yeah, but know? I think it's also important for the venues to be to be right up front too with with the bands. Even like if it's like after the first set, how many times you know you say right away if it's right. not a good night, you leave it up to the band. Right. Right. You don't let them feel like they're stuck there. Right. you know, all night, and right. then they're not going to make a lot of money at the end of right. the night. And we we tell them right up front, right. we're not throwing you out, you can stay all night, but it's your call. So that this way well, they have the opportunity, you know, to do what and they I want also, to do. And I also, from being a person that did, you know, work in a lot of nightclubs and stuff, when you didn't go out till 11 o'clock, <laughs> now, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I don't care where you go, what age, 12 o'clock, these people are gone. Yeah. I mean, even like, you know, I won't mention names, but we just played a big place over in, uh, well, somewhere over there. And uh, even that, you know, 12 o'clock, people are gone. You know, I mean, I think the DWIs have a lot to do with it. And I think, uh, you know, people got to get up and go to work or whatever. Yeah. But uh, it's a whole different ball game. I mean, than when, when we were young. Oh, yeah. I mean, exactly. a whole, totally. Well, a lot of times we even tell the bands, try not to take your break at 12 o'clock. Right. Because like you said, if the second break's at 12 o'clock, the place went the well, well, <laughs> if you notice with me, we, you know, at my age too, I mean, it isn't easy to not take a break, but I turn around to these guys and I say, if we stop now, we're losing everybody. Right. Yeah. You could feel yeah, it. You good. just can feel it. Or even certain songs, you know, no, don't play that song. They're going to go. They're going to go, you know. <laughs> so it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a chess game. It's a chess game. But uh, I think, um, I think number one, the venues should um, definitely be more upfront with the bands, and I think the bands should understand that you know these guys are running a business. They're not there just to, to break even. It's not like they're uh, gamblers and they're doing the horse player's prayer. Please, dear God, let me break even. I need the money. You know, um, they're out to make money. So it's a it's a two way street, and um, I think if you work together, I think it can really work. And I think what's happening along Long Island, it's going this way rather than coming this way. Because, I mean, I hear complaints all over the place. So don't be afraid to sit down with these owners. and Don't be intimidated by them. Tell them, listen, this is what we want to do. And somewhere in the middle, you'll work it out and you'll work out a deal. You know, whether it's like, I think that's great. You know, if you want to take the door, you put somebody at the door, that's your responsibility. If that guy steals from you, that's your problem. It's your people. So, you know, that, 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 I think that's a great idea. You know, I, and I think it's a very fair idea. Yeah. You know, and then if they're kicking something on top of that, on top of that too, that's great. So, uh, I think uh, I think we solved a lot of problems. And that, that is, I think we made awareness of what's going on out there. And I'm sure that you guys in bands all agree that something needs to be done fast. So, uh, right, next time you, you you book a gig, talk. Talk. Don't just say, oh, we got a date. Good, good, good. You know, it's exciting. Yes, it is. And everybody gets it, especially the younger bands. So talk to the owners and let's get going. So I'm going to introduce now. I'm going to introduce my man, Mr. Frank Prince, who is known as the Prince of Comedy. So Frank, come on in. He's, he's going to come in, and then we're going to take the... Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Frank Prince. Hello. How are you? Doing, How are we're going to go to a quick commercial. We'll be right back with Frank, and he's going to make you laugh. So hang in there. We'll be right back with the Maverick Soul right here on Madhouse TV.
Suffolk County Gold Refinery for the highest paid prices for your gold, diamonds, and jewelry with cash on the spot. Visit their showroom for unbelievable prices on fine jewelry and engagement rings. 71 Nobob Boulevard, Farmingdale, 631-777-CASH. Suffolk County Gold Refinery for the highest paid prices for your gold, diamonds, and jewelry with cash on the spot. Visit their showroom for unbelievable prices on fine jewelry and engagement rings. 71 Nobob Boulevard, Farmingdale, 631-777-CASH. For the highest paid prices for your gold, diamonds, and jewelry with cash on the spot. Suffolk County Gold Refinery, 631-777-CASH. What is Grand Prix Motorsports? It's a full-service motorsport performance and service shop. It's West Coast custom style, East Coast pricing, old-school customer service, custom-built bikes, all-out performance upgrades, and free towing, too. Grand Prix Motorsports is automobile, motorcycle, jet ski, and ATV, performance, service, and repair. It's online at GrandPrixMS.com. Grand Prix Motorsports, Long Island Avenue, Deer Park. Okay, listen, my bad, I made a, a bad, but listen, I want everyone to sit back and I want you all, especially you guys that are out of state, to watch this video on, on Hurricane Sandy and the devastation that it did to Long Island, just to awaken you guys that might not think it was as bad as you think it is. Believe me, it's devastating. And then we'll be right back with my man over here. But watch this video and um, say some prayers. We're going to take you inside an incredible event. We first traveled to this community because there were so many people who would not evacuate. And then we were there when it became one of the most dramatic stories of the hurricane. A fire burning more than 100 homes to the ground. And this is a New York neighborhood that is home to so many firefighters who were there for 9-11. My colleague and 2020 co-anchor Elizabeth Vargas here with more Elizabeth. Diane, we spent the day today at Breezy Point. It's a community of firefighters and first responders with a long history of sacrifice. Last night and early this morning, these people who have saved so many from so much were forced to stand by helplessly, unable to save themselves from the hurricane's most unexpected destruction. Where was your home? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry.
see what I'm talking about? I hope that everybody outside of our area really gets a grasp of what's been happening here and still happening here. There are still hundreds of thousands of people without electricity. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. And people have said to me, this is no, you, you think this is like Haiti or uh, Katrina? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And if you want to see it, you just saw a lot of it. So believe me, it's still devastating. Anything bond down in the water is gone. So like my youth is gone. But um, back to funnier times. I actually, Romeo wanted to say a couple of words about his website and um, what yeah, you well, want to do. Well, I did want to say to the bands out there, in case you want to get in touch with us, to play at our venue, um, you can call any night after 8 o'clock. We close on Mondays. Any night after 8 o'clock, and ask for Janine. She does the bookings. It's 516-797-5908. Uh, we also have a Facebook page and a website. If you try to friend Blue Parrot on Facebook, there's too many of them pop up. Go to our website, www.blueparrotmusic.com. And on the first page, there's a link to, to send a friend to the Facebook page. So you'll see that there. And another thing is, every night at 6.30 p.m., I usually put up like a two-minute video, a live video of what's going on for that night, and I end it with the joke of the day. I mean, sometimes I put it up earlier in the day because people have told me that I want to know before 6.30 what I'm doing that night. So when I get a chance, I put it up at 4 o'clock, but I'll always repost it around 6.30. So if you're in front of computer at 6.30, come to our site, and maybe I'll make you laugh with a joke also. And, and, and oh, I'm sorry, there was one other thing. Again, for the bands, we do have an opening the Friday after Thanksgiving. If somebody wants Black Friday, I think it's the 23rd, so if you want to play that night, Give us a call, like I said, 516-797-5908, Esther Jardine. And I, and I got to tell you something. Since he has been doing this joke of the day thing, it, I, I, I watch it every day. <laughs> First of all, I watch it to see who's playing there. Because, I mean, most places you have to get, you know, the, 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 I won't say the paper, but you guys know the paper I mean, to see who's playing where. So you always know who's playing there, what's going on. And uh, he usually has some good jokes, actually, believe it or not. So, uh, well, and he. <laughs> well, well, I don't want to cut my man over here. It's the joke man over here. Oh, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. All right. Got so, they, you got your website and everything? Yeah, www.blueparrotmusic.com. Okay. And like I said, from there, you click on the link for the Facebook, then you get right to us. And I just want to say one more time quickly please, please, please go to Madhouse Reality TV. Dot com sign up for free there's nothing for free anymore ladies and gentlemen and go to go to the Tommy Ma group sign up become a member and we're going to have some fun together I'm going to guarantee now. you it's going to be see we look at it he's going to be First number customer. one don't let him beat you <laughs> get on before him you want to be number one no but you are going to be at the at the foundation of this thing and trust me when i tell you it's going to be big all right i'm sorry but I have my man here. I got to get him on. I met him a few weeks ago. I was doing a show, and uh, he came up to me, and I thought I said, Mr. Rickles, what are you doing here? Um, so uh, this is Frank Prince. He is the Prince of Comedy. Now, does Don Rickles? Yes. Hey, come hey, on. What, come what, on. <laughs> what are you still doing here? <laughs> He's a great guy. He's played in uh, every um, comedy club on Long Island and New York City. He's been around a while. He's a good guy. Um, I'm, I am so happy to give him a shot. We're going to have him come up. He's going to do a little shtick over here for you. But I wanted the world to know that uh, this guy, all you booking agents, comedy clubs and stuff like that, give this guy a call. Do you have a... Um, page or uh, somewhere so how they can contact you? Sure. SimplyRickles.com at Yahoo.com or my webpage SimplyRickles.com or Facebook me or go to the Prince of and Comedy. Facebook is what name? Uh, Frank Prince, the okay. Prince of Comedy. Okay. So you all, you all know where to go. So when, you, when he gets up now, I want you to be calling him and booking him because he's a friend of mine. And he's a good guy, and he deserves a shot. And uh, we're going to give you a shot right here. So you ready Thank to you. roll? Thank you. Appreciate it. We're going to go to a quick commercial. We're going to set up the prince, and he's going to make you laugh. So we'll be right back with the Maverick Soul. Hang in there right here at Madhouse TV. Come right back. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi, this is Mickey B, the Prince of Rock and Roll. Join me for my rock and solid gold holiday dance party Saturday, December 1st, 8 p.m. at the Belmore Columbus Club, 2333 Belmore Avenue in Belmore with the rock and sounds of the 50s through the 80s. Starring the Accords, the Fabuliers, third edition, and DJ Ace playing all your rocking hits. Party with Santa, Full Hot Buffet, Coffee Dessert Cash Bar, Reservations Required. Call 516-822-9612, 516-822-9612, or MickeyB.com. Sponsored by... Welcome to Formula Auto Wash, where every day is a great day for a car wash. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Detailing packages for every budget, starting out at $29.99. 100% hand wash and detail center. Hogs hair and microfiber brushes and mitts. Proudly using Ecolab Blue Coral soaps and waxes. Formula Auto Wash has served the community for over 30 years. See any discounts all day, every day. Ladies Day Wednesday, $3 off any wash. Early bird discount Monday through Thursday till 9.30 a.m. Check out our website, formulaautowash.com. b &M Performance Cycles, 439 South Main Street, Messina, New York. We handle all parts, accessories, and do all repairs. We can custom build your bike for show or hot rod. We also do New York State inspections on all motorcycles. b &M Performance Cycles, come see us today. Ladies and gentlemen, we here at Madhouse and the Maverick Soul Hour are very, very proud. This is going to be Frank's TV debut, and we are very proud to do it right here at Madhouse TV on the Maverick Soul Hour. So, Frank, God bless you. Thank you. Hit it, baby. Thank you. Hi, my name's Frank. I'm a recovering nut job. Thank you. <laughs> Anger management really helped me tone it down, so I'm a nut with no job. That's why I do stand-up comedy. I like this job better than my therapy sessions. All you people that are married, watching, or have a couple, be glad to who you're with. I just recently celebrated my second year anniversary with my cat. <laughs> my therapist says I'm so codependent, I need to date a woman that don't talk. So I traded my ex-wife in for a, a cat. And I'm, well, I'm happy. I was in a, a humane investigator for 10 years for the Suffolk County SPCA. And um, that's what I did, volunteer. I didn't get paid. I love animals. And that's how I got my cat. But I give comedy a shot. When's this recession going to end? Where's my Don Rickles fans? Of course, there are plenty Yay! of watching. 
sorry to say, Don Rickles couldn't make it tonight. So I'm here as this resemblance. <laughs> Everywhere I go, people stop me and say, hey, you look like Don Rickles. I said, I know, I had Joan Rivers as plastic surgeon. <laughs> Maybe if I gained 50 pounds, I'd look more like him. I've been on an eating binge. I love Italian food. That's what happens when you're depressed. I just got out of a bizarre relationship. I went from dating to an exclusive couple in four dates. Date one, we kissed. Day two, I met the parents. Day three, I had a headache. Day four, she's, wow, I just love you. I adore you. You're my prince. We're an exclusive couple. Said so date five, I had to go get the rider truck to drive her out of my apartment. I had to cut that cord. You know, it was either horror comedy, so I'm sticking with comedy, and here I am. Then I got into another bizarre relationship. I have what they call the weird magnet. Some people have GPS, but I have the weird magnet. I dated this woman. She was divorced, but lived with her ex-husband. <laughs> that means I had to pick her up and drop her off at a doorstep. Then she wanted to become intimate with me. I says, you want me to sleep in your house, in your room, in your bed next to your ex-husband? Gee, can I call my ex-wife? Maybe she could sleep with him and we could all have waffles in the morning for breakfast. <laughs> then we, then she had money issues. She went through money like water. I gave her $100 to go shopping. 20 minutes later, she comes back. Frankie Boo, I blew 100. I need another one. Here you go, honey. 10 minutes later, she comes back. Frankie Poo, I blew 100. I need another one. Gee, honey, you gave me a heck of an idea. I'm going to go to the tattoo parlor, tattoo my PP of a $100 bill. Next time you want to blow 100, you won't have far to go. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Romeo. There's another joke. They don't call him Romeo for nothing. <laughs> That's Juliet. Sorry, Janine. For, then I, you know, she used to call me five times a day, you know, and I wouldn't answer on purpose because I was at lunch. She got a hold of me. What were you doing so important? I was having lunch. She says, no, you weren't. You were on a date. I says, yeah, I was with your sister. She had to think. I said, wait a minute. I don't have a sister. I said, will you get one so I could date her? Guys, back me up on this one. I need the guys to back me up. And she turns around. She says, Frank, I don't need your crap. I got a line of guys a mile long knocking at my door. I said, well, do yourself a favor. Why don't you cut the line, open the door, and walk through it. See ya. I had to cut that cord. That's it. Then I gave internet dating a try. No luck there. I went on Match.com. I got five free matches. They all went up in smoke. <laughs> I went on PlentyOfFish.com. Turns out I caught Fudgy the Whale. <laughs> I can't even have a sugar mom. I'm diabetic. <laughs> I got a tick in the mail for going through red light. So I sent a picture of a PBA card. They sent me a picture of handcuffs. <laughs> so I had to go pay the bill. I'm going to end on the serious side. I want to thank everybody in this room for having me, especially Tommy. But most of all, I want to thank you veterans. You guys rock for your service and giving us our freedom. I salute you. Thank you. You've been great. And here comes Tommy. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you he was a good man. I got my other two over here coming over. It's about time that the old Maverick go over there. We're going to hit the old dusty trail. And uh, next week we're going to have a, I think we're going to have a great band next week. So uh, don't forget to tune in right here, Madhouse TV, the Maverick Soul Hour with Tommy Ma. I want to spank, spank my special guest. Oh, Romeo, I want to spank your ass. Uh, but I want to thank I want to thank everybody for coming in, and I think I hope that we did uh, help out a little bit with the bands and the venues. I certainly hope so, anyway. So, uh, everybody.
Have a great week. Let's try to get our lives back together as best we can. Everybody say a prayer for everybody. And God bless you all. Have a great week. And we'll see you next Monday night right here on Madhouse TV, the Maverick Soul Hour with Tommy Ma. So be blessed and have a good week. Thank <music> you.